Okay, so we can simulate the growth and death of a bacterial population of biomass um, using the Monod equation. And there are two Monod equations here, one for the concentration of the biomass of the bacteria, and another for a concentration of the substrate that the biomass is using as its, uh, its food. And so the way this is working is, uh, this is the Monod part right here. There are these two uh, constants associated with the Monod kinetics. And what this says is the rate of change of the biomass is a function of the substrate. And the substrate is uh, analyzed using this equation. And we also include this term here so if we just were to ignore this part, this would say that the rate of change of the biomass is undergoing a uh, first order decay. So this is how we're going to describe the death of the microorganisms, the decay of the biomass. And the um, substrate kinetics here, uh, this is uh, Monod kinetics, and so um, it's uh, We've got these terms here that are um, inhibition terms and they're given here and they're uh, terms that uh, that allow you to tune the Monod equation um, to account for uh, various types of effects that would inhibit the um, reaction. We have this term here this is the um, uh, ratio of the basically it's called the yield function and it's how much biomass is produced per unit of substrate. Okay, so we can put this into common. And we have a model here that's using transport of diluted species and um, the action is right here in the variables and so I set this up a little bit different than the previous ones. For the Monod formula, what I did was to set, to create a, um, a analytic function. So this is calling this analytic function that's described here. And this is the formula. Uh, it was the second formula that we saw uh, in the PowerPoint right here. Well, kind of. It had th this function here has those uh, decay terms here, or has the inhibition terms right there. Um, but what it doesn't have is the minus one over y out front. Okay, so this is going to be the the complete form of the Monod equation, and we can set these terms here, uh, these inhibition terms equal to one if we don't want to use them. So I wrote this. And then here under variables, I'm calling that term, uh, that expression, an odd, and here are the variables, the parameters, and there's the divide by y and the negative. So this is the rate expression for the substrate, and here's the one for the biomass. It's calling the same function, and I have the minus kd times c here to account for the, the decay. The constants that I'm using are over here. I put those in a separate window just to keep track of them easier. Uh, I also have a parameter up here, the KD term, and I'm just going to set that equal to zero the first time through so we can take a look and see what this process looks like uh, without any decay or without any uh, death of the organisms. So let's take a quick look at how this is set up. The dependent variables, there are two of them, C and SS, and the convection is turned off. Uh, initial values, here I'm just setting the initial value of the microbes, the biomass, to 0 0.01, and the substrate to 1. Under reactions, 
the kinetics are here and they're described up in the variables um, the way we've done in the past. So I set this up and it's running now for um, for 10 hours. So this is 36,000 seconds. And I set it up with uh, for that time period. Um, that's the time period that I use for the simulation that's in the notes. And then when I picked that time period, I went and, and adjusted these values so that it would respond uh, over that time period. If we were to do this for experimental data, then the time period would be set by the experimental data. So we go and run this analysis, and um, it runs pretty quickly. Um, and we get results showing here. Uh, so this is the substrate, it decays and flattens out, and then the biomass is uh, increasing and uh, leveling out here. And the uh, term Y was 0.7, so we have a ratio of biomass to substrate of 0.7. So when we start off with one unit of substrate to begin with, and all of that decays, we end up with 0.7 units of biomass. So that seems, seems good. That seems right. Okay, so here's our growth kinetics for uh, the microbes, though we might also want to consider uh, having the microbes die, and so we can put in a first order decay term here, and I'm going to put in 10 to the minus 4, and then when we run it, we're going to have, the, instead of coming up and flattening out to a steady state, the microbes will population will rise up. It never gets up to 0.7 because the microbes are um, starting to die off right here. And so once the substrate is used up, they're not able to grow anymore. And so the, um, the, the population essentially drops off and it'll, it'll approach zero. Okay, so that's really the full setup of the equations that we've, we've put together. One thing that I thought would be interesting, though, is to say, well, um, this term here, this KD, this is the, the death rate of microbes. And we could put in a constant term. I guess microbes are continuously dying as they grow. Um, but there are some things that would kill microbes, um, an antibiotic, for example. And so we could simulate what happens to the population when an antibiotic is introduced. And so what I did is to make a step function here. We could take a look at that step function. It's going to start out at zero and step up to one at uh, 20,000 seconds. And so what I'll do now is to take this step function that I called antibiotics, go up to variables, and here's the Here's where the death of the microbes is occurring. So I can multiply that by antibiotics, the function of time, and run that. And now the microbial population, the, the biomass should increase and level out until the antibiotics kick in here at 20,000 seconds and then it starts to drop off. And that doesn't look like really great antibiotics, but we could change it by uh, tweaking the decay parameter. If we go up here, just increase it by a factor of 10, that's a, a, a bit stronger antibiotic. And so we can see what that does. We change KD to 0.01, and now we have a much uh, more rapid decay.